YouTube. You guys either play favorites, you are racist, or it's a mix of the two. And a lot of YouTubers agreed with him. Our video, limited ads, age restricted. For the thumbnail, it's the exact same fucking thumbnail. You're not the only one, bro. YouTube isn't only just white people. I get you, Corey. I understand. So I want to answer one big question. Does YouTube prefer white faces over black? <laughs> Nearly 1.4 billion, I'm talking every one in four, visit YouTube every month. 694,000 hours of video is streamed on YouTube per minute. And that completely outshines even Netflix. From prank videos to travel vlogs, gaming videos to long form explainers and product reviews to just sitting in a room reacting to stuff. Kind of like what I'm doing now. And with that many videos, surely comes not only diversity in content, but in creators too. And YouTube wanted to prove that recently. So they conducted a study alongside the University of Oxford and they found 74%. How many YouTube users say that it supports a diverse range of people to become content creators? So what makes YouTube so inclusive according to their own stats? Well, I went to the YouTube festival held in Camden a few months ago. I did get to meet a man who is behind some of the biggest UK stars on social media. Taff is part of the wall of entertainment who has brought us the likes of Chunks, Young Philly, Nella Rose, Hanny Panero, ZZ Mills, LV General and more. It's a platform within the platform of YouTube to champion young and emerging talent. One thing that you actually get on YouTube as a platform is the direct response from the consumer who's the viewer. So you know immediately if people resonate with this, if people like it or people don't like it. What's been amazing is that, you know, you work with somebody like Chunks, for example, who's got a very strong Somali following and he's unapologetically Muslim, that's his religion, that's what he stands for. And he doesn't have to tone any of that down, but the platform allows him to be that person. Whereas like, you know, being on TV, it's like, oh, you have to be sensitive to this and sensitive to that. So actually, even if you did get divert stories, they wouldn't be told in the most authentic way. Is there more that can be done to help champion diverse talent across platforms? I think there's always more, but the organizations need to do more in terms of making sure that their decision makers are from diverse backgrounds too, so that they can make diverse decisions. And I've had issues where I've walked off and said, oh, we're not doing a show because I'm being told, oh, maybe if you put this talent in it, it will make sense. I said, no, you make it palatable for you, not make sense for the show. So we've then said, no, we're just going to do the show put it on YouTube. And then we do exactly <laughs> that. And it gets 125 million views. So it's like... And this is Phil from YouTube. You know, only about 37% um, of uh, people in the UK think traditional channels represent effectively kind of modern Britain. Um, whereas YouTube, um, those, that number is 77%. Um, is For every pound that advertisers spend mm. on YouTube, 55% of that goes directly to the creators. That is really helping to fund sort of diversity of content and diversity of creators that we've, that we've been talking about. I did come across something that was a little bit problematical. So there was this um, YouTuber, I don't know if you know the whoa, name. Whoa, 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 okay, pause. Now, this is the part where I'm just a little bit cheeky. I bring up something that's gonna throw Phil off. It's, uh, his name's Corey X Kenshin, are you aware of him? I'm not actually, no. Okay. He noticed that a video he did on the game Mortuary Assistant got age restricted. But compared to other creators out there, yeah. theirs is not age restricted. He said, listen, I'll put my hands up if I'm wrong, but it seems like there's an element of, of favoritism there. And he even used the word racism. It's hard to comment on an individual case, particularly as, I, as I'm not familiar with it. And you can imagine there's so much content on YouTube that it's hard to be across um, everything. I'm not, I, I really feel that, you yeah, know, we treat you know, everybody the same um, on, on YouTube, right? We, there is no, there's no favoritism. I don't think there's anything, you know, sinister in the algorithm. You know, occasionally there'll be cases that we have to review, you know, but I don't think it's part of something, you know, that's, you know, that's working against a particular group. Um, All right, I was a little bit unfair. I can't expect Phil to know about this one single case that, and we want genuine answers from our interviewees, not media trained ones. That's why we don't actually tend to give them the questions beforehand. But there was also one more reason. I didn't actually discover the case of Corey X Kenshin until the night before the festival itself. However, it is important because it's his video that got us asking if YouTube prefers some creators over others because of race or favoritism in the first place. So we need to talk about it. This time, I can no longer let it slide. 
a gaming YouTuber by the name of Cory X Kenshin, who has over 15 million subscribers, posted this video, basically talking about the inconsistency of how he was treated compared to other white creators over playthroughs of this game, Mortuary Assistant. His video was age restricted, which means it cannot be viewed by under 18s and removes ads from the video, so he can't generate income from it. But other creators' videos weren't. So he got his YouTube representative, which big channels tend to have, to check why this was the case. And they simply removed the restriction. But he questioned why. He wanted to know why there was an inconsistency in treatment in the first place. So in following up with his rep again, who went to YouTube again, they then age restricted his and other creators' videos of that gameplay too. But again, why? Then he says this. YouTube. You guys either play favorites, you are racist, or it's a mix of the two. Racism, favoritism, strong accusations. Now I tried to get a hold of Corey to talk more about this, but he wouldn't reply to any of my emails. However, there were loads of creators that made a ton of reaction videos talking about what Corey brought up. I haven't seen any, any real profound like discrimination against anyone. I took the thumbnail that the cut was using and I used the exact same thumbnail on my video my video got flagged for the thumbnail is it users flagging videos who maybe don't like him is it racists is it people at youtube doing it nobody knows the video that he put out was a game that was clearly like m rated clearly that would be age restricted of course there's no concrete evidence that there's any racists on the policy team but since youtube can't communicate these decisions all you can do is guess there is no specific word that you can use to say this is what's going on they're yeah. racist it's, it's hard to, it's impossible to prove you know what Corey's standing up for us black creators man and if they want to listen to him we're doomed. youtube wants minorities but they don't want you to be outside of what their box is. You get what I'm trying to say? You know, I don't want to accuse them of racism because all the people that I would talk to would be, you know, pretty white, pretty white folks. They need to be transparent with creators and actually open their mouths about the problems that exist with this entire process. It seems like according to the creator's own experiences, there is a degree of discrimination at play here. And that might have something to do with this. Was it automated or was it a human that age restricted in in the first place? Because if some creators are being highlighted above others because of things like race or favoritism, it's important to know whether it's humans or algorithms that are making these decisions. Here's why. Firstly, what do we understand about an algorithm? Essentially, it's a rule written to do a job. In this case, assess and assign content to social media users according to their preferences and likes. So if I like and watch cat content, it's gonna feed me more cat content. But these can be flawed. How so? It's all down to the data that is used to train these algorithms how to respond or recognize something in the first place. So in this real world example, this AI being used to diagnose skin cancer would work less well on darker skin because, well, the system wasn't trained with many pictures of black skin with skin cancer compared to white. But what about social media? Well, I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, there was the time that Twitter's cropping tool favored white faces over black ones when cropping. And when they tested their own tool, they found there were favorable results towards white skin. So algorithms aren't perfect. And from what we do know, YouTube's algorithm uses what you search, click on and how much you watch of something to determine what videos it will suggest on your homepage. But what about guideline strikes? The very thing that Corey was complaining about in the first place. Well, YouTube actually did a video with Creator Insider last year to shine some light on this. Essentially, Laura from YouTube explained that number one, human experts evaluate appeals, and two, they appeal quickly, sometimes because they check segments that are flagged and not the whole video. Now, couple of things. YouTube is big, I'm talking 500 hours of content is uploaded to the platform every minute. So it's questionable if they have enough humans to deal with all the appeals that came their way in a timely and accurate fashion. So how many cases of human error can there be? Could it be that what one person considers breaking the rules, another wouldn't? Are there elements of favoritism? I mean, YouTube itself has been accused of showing favoritism before. Remember this. Ah, it's rewind time. YouTube Rewind 2018, the most disliked video 
on the platform. One of the reasons why it was so disliked is because many felt that YouTube were trying to force this positive environment and message to appeal to advertisers who didn't like the rude content that appeared in a lot of videos. Can we give a moment to working moms? And so YouTube excluded big content creators and trends in Rewind 2018 whilst including others that weren't as prominent. So it shows that the company itself has made decisions that have shown favoritism. Now, when I first interviewed Phil, he said to me, it would be good to do a follow-up interview once he's caught up about the case or speak to someone else from YouTube. So, I took them up on their offer, reached out to them and they declined. <laughs> Super annoying. <laughs> All they wanted to do was provide a written statement. Well, fine, okay, so I sent them a list of questions that I had that I wanted answering. And this was their response. They gave no answers to Corey's situation. And talking about their appeals process, they were more vague than in a video they released a few months ago talking about how it works. But we can say that going by the videos that creators have made, it could very well be the case that YouTube does have a problem with creators of different races being treated in different ways. But given a lack of transparency from the company, we can't say exactly why that is. I mean, because they won't admit that there is an issue either, we can't say for sure that there is one. It could be the case that all these black creators that are saying they're being treated different to white ones is just a massive coincidence. Sure, YouTube are celebrating great diversity results with that recent study, but it doesn't fix things. Until the core reason and cause of why this disparity is identified, it seems that YouTube is just trying to mend a broken bone with plasters. If there's anything else you'd like us to investigate, please let us know in the comments. And YouTube, please get back to me about this. We should really talk.